I really would have liked to have showered first. But. <laughs> You'll go to Such is the life. Greg Cream, right? Greg Cream? That's me, yeah. Do you go by Gregory or Greg? Greg's good. Okay. John, how you wanted to add some stuff? Oh, yeah. They, uh, no, it's okay. They are all. One guy's your name. One bond. Thank you. 250. Yeah. Is it Covanus? Covanus. Covanus. The show was engineered by. Sorry. We have, what do we have? Four arrested? There's two. Three. Three of these folks who were arrested. Yeah. And a change to change to the rest of the Okay. We might as well go to the theme song, right? What? Go to the theme song, right? Yeah, theme song. Do I need to change anything? I'm still going to you for my first question. Um, they, they were charged. They were, they were. No, I'm still going to you oh, yeah, for my first question. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. We'll get it in the mail. Ready? We're going mics on. Yes, too much I like. Say again? Too much I like. So people can come close. Okay, they're not going to come. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Those mics are live when it's time. You guys are okay. cozy up. Ready? Go. Mic on. Good afternoon and welcome to the last call on 88.5 FM. My name is Beth Bell. Lisa Marzilli will be back next week. Today, I'm joined with Fire Assistant News and Public Affairs Director Sean Van. In just a moment, we're going to introduce our guests from the studio, open up the lines, and take your calls and emails. But right up front, I want to thank the supporters of the station who contributed to the Fall Fun Drive that ended Wednesday. WMNF Drive Time News and Public Affairs Friday edition fell only a few, short do a few dollars short, $575 short to be specific. If you enjoy the news, the popular show Counterspin and or the opportunity to express or hear others express opinions about the issues of the day on this, this segment called The Last Call, please make a pledge of financial support. You can do that right now by going to WMNF.org. Give what you can to help keep us on the air. Well, after nearly four weeks of peaceful protests in downtown Tampa, uh, just before 9 o'clock this morning, six occupied Tampa activists were detained by Tampa police and later arrested, as I understand. We're going to discuss what the activists did and what happened to them today. Um, we also have a guest in the studio. Uh, uh, we are joined by some of those, uh, three of the activists who were arrested today, so we're going to hear from them. We're also joined by former city council member and current ACLU staff attorney John Dingfelder. John's been observing the Occupy Tampa movement, and he's going to be able to answer some of our questions about the legal issues. My first question today, however, is directed to Sean, our Assistant News and Public Affairs Director, who was present in downtown Tampa this morning when the police arrived and he witnessed the detention of the six activists. Sean, can you set the scene for us for what happened this morning? Tell us what happened. And about a little before nine, some people had decided that they were not going to get up as, as normal and uh, the police gave them warnings, look, you guys have five minutes to get up. And when that didn't happen, they were detained, they were handcuffed, put in the squad cars and, and pulled away. But since we do have three of the uh, Tampa Six here, the Occupy Tampa, six members of the Occupy Tampa movement were arrested this morning. Why don't we ask them? Um, Greg, Greg Prem is one of the, he was actually the first person who was arrested. So tell us what that experience was like and uh, what, what happened this morning. Well, basically, uh, we were spread out on the sidewalk, just sleeping, kind of minding our own business and uh, the police uh, came by with a wake-up call um, and asked us all to get up and I heard that some of us on the other end were uh, not getting up so we decided to get together <coughs> and uh, the sidewalk was unobstructed uh, passerbys were unimpeded they were moving without issue um, in fact the biggest threat to obstruction on the sidewalk were the police cars. Um, that said, uh, they, they said that you, ha you have to get up within five minutes. And one of us asked, well, what's going to happen if you don't get up in five minutes? And actually the answer was, we'll see. So we saw. And uh, basically they came and just said, uh, are you going to comply? I asked them, comply with what? Um, and I said that you know the belongings around me weren't weren't mine, um, and they just 
hefted me up and arrested me. That was it. And if you'd like to ask questions of any of these people who were arrested this morning, please call 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions at dj at wmnf.org. And you can see video of the arrests on our website, wmnf.org slash news. There are two videos up right now, and there will be more later. Um, so what? let me ask this of Skylar Winslow. Skylar, what did they charge you with when you were booked into jail? Uh, when we were booked? What, what hap what, tell us what happened after you left downtown Tampa. Oh, after we left downtown Tampa, they, uh, they drove us out to uh, the Orient Road Jail, and uh, we, went to, we had to go through the entire booking uh, procedure, and it wasn't until we were there for about three hours that we actually were told what it was that we were arrested for. Actually, have that slip on me. This is the funny part, folks. <laughs> Statue 22-8 obstructing streets slash sidewalks. And I can read that actually. It says it's unlawful for any person to place in or upon any place, street, sidewalk, alley, landing, wharf, or pier, owned or controlled by the city and located within the city limits. Any article or thing without a permit, therefore, unless such article or thing is otherwise authorized by law. Now it goes on, but I think that's maybe the key phrase there. You can't put any article or thing, but I saw some people who were detained who are just lying there, maybe with he heavy clothes on and maybe a blanket on them, but not on the sidewalk. What gives? I, I, I don't know what that was. I, I simply had a blanket on myself uh, laying down next to uh, one of the other protesters and uh, a sign that said, I'm not a table, because when we spoke to city council the other day, they specifically said, you people are not objects. We, we're, we're human beings. Great. I think we have a caller. Why don't we go to the first caller? Caller, you're on the air. Do you have a question for us? Okay, what's your name? see what the third person here that was arrested, Andrew Kovanis, has to say about that. Couldn't hear it. So An Andrew, uh, Linda wants to know um, whether they think that, whether you think that the, there's a big movement in the country for police to arrest occupiers all across the country. I definitely think there is a concerted effort with law enforcement agencies across the country to crack down on the occupied movements. I think this was pretty evident with uh, a mass arrest in Boston, in LA, in Chicago seemed to occur at the same day, at the same time. Um, so yes, I, I would think so. All right, let me bring John Dinkelder into this. Um, John, you used to be on Tampa City Council, and yesterday these uh, quite a few Occupy Tampa people went to City Council, and afterwards, two members of Council, Yvonne Capine and Mike Suarez, spoke with some of the occupiers and. They, when I talked to the Occupy Tampa people last night, they were under the impression that those members of city council thought that a person wasn't considered an object or, or thing, um, let me get the wording right, an article or thing, and so that sleeping wasn't covered under this statute. What do you think? Well, I think at the end of the day, it's going to end up being up to a judge or a jury to decide whether or not these people or articles or things, you know, uh, uh, assuming they might take it to trial. Um, I've, you know, I, I've had serious doubts about the ability of the city to be able to enforce this particular city code against against these folks. Um, and frankly, I think the city probably had equal doubts. I think that's why they've sort of been pulling back and you know and, and didn't crack down you know right away. Um, you know, but. Uh, you know, today, I guess, for whatever reason, they changed their mind and uh, went ahead and made those arrests. Uh, like I say, it will play out in court. Should we go to another phone call? I think so. Caller? Caller, you're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? All right, Paul, do you have a question?
Andrew, how would you respond? I totally agree with you. I think that we're starting local and we're dealing with our local city council, our local mayors, and we will spread the movement to state capitals and the nation's capital. But I think right now we're organizing on the local level, we're gathering our support, uh, building momentum, and uh, we're, we're going to move on. All right, thanks so much for that call. We have <clears throat> Thank you, caller. Uh, all right, thanks for that call. Having been at the park just about every day over the last two weeks, I, I don't think it's uh, dirty at all. All right, caller, you're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? I am. What's your name? I don't know if anyone in here knows the answer to that question. Anyone? Not that I'm aware of, no. I think what the caller is trying to get at is that um, despite maybe you know similar sized protests, the Tea Party had never gotten in, in this much legal trouble as the Occupy Tampa people seem to be. John Dingfelder? Well, going back to a question or two, you know, I encouraged and I think it's excellent that, that the, these folks went down to city council. Um, there, you know, there's a division in the city that the mayor and the chief of police are the ones who control the day-to-day -day, uh, administration of, of law. And they're the ones who decided or, or you know, make the decisions about who's going to be arrested and who's not going to be arrested. But it's important to have that dialogue with city council too. Because I believe at the end of the day, especially if, if, the, if the court refuses to, uh, uh, to prosecute, um, that they're going to go back to the city council and ask city council to strengthen some of these laws um, to, to make it clear that you can't sleep on the sidewalk or that sort of thing. So regardless of how I feel about it, I think it's, it's really important to express your, your you know, freedom of expression, uh, your expre give your opinion to city council, and I'm, I'm proud that you all went down there yesterday. Thank you. All right, let's go to the next call. <coughs> Hi, caller, you're on the air. What's your name? Yes. Hi, Jim. Skyler? I, I, I'm a little bit confused on what the question is exactly. I gotta put the headphones on midway through. Me personally, I think that uh, one of the big, the, the the big reasons that we felt like this was necessary was because of the push and pull that we have with the police right now. Them saying that we we have to do something, we need to do this, and they haven't they, they were never able to back it up with actual legal documents. And when it comes down to the point of us being harassed on a day to day basis, eventually you have to say enough is enough. This is our sidewalk. This is our city. You guys can't make up the rules, and it was. It, it, I, I feel as if it was very justified, and uh, it would definitely help strengthen the movement. Well, thanks for that call. Well, <laughs> welcome to the club. <laughs>
All right. Well, thanks, Jim. Keep us posted on keep us posted on that case. We're going to go to another call in just a second. I want to give out the phone number first. 813-239-9663 is the number to call if you'd like to join this conversation. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. I'm Sean Canan, and joining me in the studio is Beth Bell. We also have our guest, John Dingfelder, former Tampa City Council member who is now an ACLU attorney, and Greg Prem, Skylar Winslow, and Andrew Kovanis, who were all three arrested this morning in Tampa at the Occupy Tampa movement, and I believe their, their charge had to do with being on the sidewalk during the day. 813-239-9663. All right, let's go to the next caller. <coughs> Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name? Hi, Richard. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Let's let Greg answer that. Um, you know, they set parameters um, which I don't feel were even within the guidelines of the law, but they did say that they would allow us to sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. However, what they, what they actually did was come by every hour on the hour throughout the evening with their cameras and their lights to film us for no particular reason, which kept uh, most, if not all of us, up and then they would also come uh, at 6 a.m. to wake us all up. So allowing us to sleep uh, in name is one thing, but actually allowing us to sleep is another, and many of us have been very sleep deprived because of the actions of Tampa PD. Uh, another thing on that, they won't even let us sleep in the park during the day. They, they, they come out there and they wake you up at 6 a.m. and don't give you another chance to sleep. They'll arrest you for sleeping in the city parks. And that was Skylar. that it does. Uh, let me just interject. Uh, I understand that sentiment. However, that's not uh, that's not how it is. We actually have a section of the sidewalk taped off, a four foot. Uh, actually, we made it six feet because the law requires four. Um, people pass through unimpeded. So I understand the concern, but we try to make sure that. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much for that call, Richard. We're going to go to another call in just a second, but maybe this would be a good time to remind people.